Okay, I forgot the uh, exact time. Uh, David Cohn, the MLA for Fredericton said, announced that he was going to have a little meeting at the library to explain what's going on, what they're talking about for the getting ready for minority government. Now I'll say what, I'll say maybe 20 people will show up there if they're lucky. I mean, uh, I've got a few questions I gotta ask. Uh, what? How can the people Alliance be in the same room as Kelly Lamrock and Sede Simal, the mayor of Edmiston, that was really pushing against them, saying they compare the Acadian flag, people Alliance compare the Acadian flag to uh, uh, ISIS, the ISIS flag. So, Anyway, I don't know how many people are going to show up here. Let's see. Was there that many people here? All good. Okay. Move up one more church. You know why I'm gonna keep this on. So they were gonna meet at the library. And then they said Walmart Church. <coughs> Interesting. Is there that many people interested? I'm gonna keep this on. What the hell? Or valley footwear, good shoes. Front door open. Front door open. Oh, no. Yeah. It's a confidence motion. 
So that means uh, if uh, there aren't sufficient MLAs who um, support uh, the informed speech, to, in other words, a majority of MLAs to support the informed speech, uh, then the government, uh, led by Brian Clark, would fall, and uh, the left-hand governor would uh, turn to, uh, well, her prerogative would be to turn to um, Blaine Higgs and ask him if he could see, get the confidence of the House uh, to lead a minority government. So that's uh, where that goes. And the only two kinds of votes that are confidence votes, uh, votes that if they go against whoever's leading the minority government causes uh, that government to fall, are the vote on the budget speech, or the, sorry, the throne speech, and on the budget. So on individual pieces of legislation, uh, proposed laws, uh, if, if, if those are defeated, then uh, it has no impact on, uh, on the stability of the government or, 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 or the, uh, the longevity, longevity of the government. In fact, if there's um, votes where an equal number of people vote for uh, and against a particular bill that's introduced, uh, the speaker actually votes at third reading against that bill to maintain the status quo. And as, in other words, kind of sends it back to say, you guys need to work harder on this so that you can get, come up with something that uh, actually the majority of MLAs can support. So uh, the speaker always votes to maintain the status quo. And when it comes to legislation, that's uh, what would happen, interestingly <coughs> enough. Um, so I want to turn this over to you now because uh, this is really about me hearing from you uh, to uh, get a sense from you on how you think a minority government could work uh, or should work in your view in New Brunswick and what role you think I should be playing in this. So um, don't be shy. We'll get uh, people to line up down the aisle here and uh, where you go. I might sit just to... Yeah, sit. So I, I just don't get it. I don't see how it's going to work. So what are the possibilities? If, if the Green joins the Liberals, they don't have enough. Somebody has to be the speaker. If you join the Conservatives, you still have to provide a speaker. I just don't get it. Like, what, what is the, what's the plan? Is there anything you're ruling out? You're not going to work with the People's Alliance? Or? So, <coughs> So that's a pretty complicated question. Because <laughs> it's a complicated situation. And, uh, you know, uh, my two caucus colleagues and I have run all kinds of scenarios to try and figure this out. And it's why um, I've, been, I've been meeting and speaking with uh, Brian Gallant and Blaine Higgs to try and figure this out. Well, how, can, how can this be made to work? How do we get stability? Um, and. Uh, and Got a government that's going to work and deliver a positive agenda for New Brunswickers. So it's it's complicated, absolutely. Um, of course, there. I mean, there's various things that can happen. Um, there's no need for formal agreements to actually, you know, when a throne speech motion is voted on, for MLAs to vote the way they think they should be voting for a throne speech. Um, whoever brings the throne speech. And uh, so the confidence can be tested at that point. Um, there can be some informal understanding that, you know, how the votes might go. Um, the other approach is uh, what's happened in BC, and not just BC, but other places in the past where a more formal agreement is signed. In BC, they use something that's fairly uh, well known called the uh, confidence and supply agreement. So that's a confidence on the throne speech and supply regarding referring to the budget, uh, where um, that's a negotiated agreement that says uh, uh, the party would supply or a caucus would supply uh, confidence on throne speeches and budgets for some 